Welcome back to CBS This Morning. I'm Gail King with Anthony Mason and Tony DeCopel. A young woman who encouraged her friend to kill himself in a series of text messages is out of jail today. Michelle Carter was released more than three months early. She served nearly a year of her 15-month sentence. She was convicted of involuntary manslaughter in 2017, three years after 18-year-old Conrad Roy died by suicide. 48 Hours correspondent Aaron Moriarty has been following this case and joins us at the table. I remember the story. A lot of intense feelings here. Why was she released so early? Well, simply put, good morning, but simply put, she was released yesterday on good behavior. She was incarcerated after a judge determined that she was criminally responsible for Conrad Roy's suicide. Her case may be over, but the debate about whether words alone can be lethal weapons is not. She was a model inmate uh, for the entire time that she was here. Michelle Carter was released early from the Bristol County House of Corrections in Dartmouth, Massachusetts. The county sheriff said Carter had accrued enough good time credits after participating in jail programs. She will be hopefully um, reintegrating successfully. Carter's release may end her nearly three-year battle to have the conviction overturned. In 2017, Carter was held responsible for the death of Conrad Roy. Roy died in his truck of carbon monoxide poisoning in a Kmart parking lot three years earlier. Investigators found hundreds of texts from Carter to Roy urging him to end his life. One of her texts read, you're ready and prepared. All you have to do is turn the generator on and you'll be free and happy. No more pushing it off. No more waiting. We spoke to Conrad's mom, Lynn Roy, for 48 hours. There was one point where he actually got out of the truck mm -hmm. and changed his mind. Yeah, he was scared. And she told him to go back in the truck. Yes. Carter argued that her conviction, based on her words alone, violated her First Amendment right to free speech. Her appeal ended earlier this month, when the U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear it. Linroy issued a statement after Carter's release, which reads in part, For my family, we have reached closure. I will continue to honor my son and to find ways to help others who may be experiencing what I have experienced. She and Roy's sister spoke about that pain. It still hurts just as much as it did then, doesn't it? <laughs> I will live with this forever, um, the pain. Michelle Carter is out, but now she has a criminal record and she will be on probation for the next two and a half years. You know, it's interesting when I said the debate will continue. The debate is continuing yeah, at this everybody. table I right keep here. thinking about the Roy family. This is very, very painful. And this young woman has never spoken about this. No, case. she hasn't, or anyone in her family reached out. But this case is really going to have a, a big impact. It, is it over? The Supreme Court has now rejected hearings? It, it, it has. And unless she violates probation, I think her case is pretty much over. But the thing is, it's had an impact because we now know what coercive suicide is. Yeah. Um, Conrad's mother, Lynn, is really hoping that uh, Massachusetts will pass Conrad's law, which will make coercive uh, suicide against the law, punishable up to five years. Um, if, it, someone, if someone has that kind of emotional pain, I think pretty pretty yeah. simply, you help them get help. Yes. And, and you were saying Michelle Carter never showed remorse. No, but also there was a benefit that she got. The evidence indicated that she tried to cover up, so she knew what she did was wrong, and that she pushed him, at least from the evidence, because she wanted sympathy and attention from friends. But high school being high school. Yeah, you? and from the time you're a little kid, we're all taught words are very powerful. Yes. So yeah, that's, they are. This is hard. Thank you very much, Aaron. Free speech aside, Aaron, thank you very much.